Well, almost universally, ancient texts and traditions have reminded us that we are connected. They've said that we are one, that we are part of our world, that we're part of one another, that we're part of the earth and the changes in the earth. And what I've found is over the last 22 years as I've traveled nearly every continent of the earth and spoken to people from so many different traditions and cultures, is that people really want to believe that. They want to believe and they like to believe that we're truly connected, but they need a reason for that belief. In the last years of the 20th and now the first years of the early 21st century, science is now giving us that reason for our logical mind to make the connection, to see how we're related and how we influence the world and how by honoring that connection through our hearts, we literally have the power to influence the very fields of this planet to sustain life in the world, uh, sustain the, the health and the healing and the well-being of our bodies and it's all about the magnetic fields of the earth. Where this really came, came into focus uh, was around the events of September 11th, 2001. Uh, it was during that time that the United States has, uh, has two satellites. They're called the GOES, G-O-E-S, Geosynchronous Environmental Satellites, I believe is what they're called. One positioned in the Northern Hemisphere, one positioned in the Southern Hemisphere. And the role of these satellites is to measure the magnetic fields of the earth and send back readings every 30 minutes. And those readings normally fall within a certain range of data that scientists are relatively used to seeing. Well, it was in September of 2001 that scientists began to see some readings that were off, off the map, just off the scale compared to what they'd seen in the past. And they said, well, what's happening? What is it that could be influencing the, the magnetic fields of the entire planet to such a degree that we're seeing these big spikes that our satellites are sending back. We've never seen these before. They overlaid the data from the satellites onto a calendar of months and days, and lo and behold, what they found is that the spike was occurring precisely during the time of September 11th, 2001, and even more precisely that the first spike occurred 15 minutes after the first plane hit the first tower in the World Trade Center. Now, the reason this is is so important to a scientist is because for 300 years our science has been based on two false assumptions. The first false assumption is that everything is separate from everything else. That what happens in one place has no effect on what happens anywhere else and if it looks like it does it's only a coincidence. The second false assumption is that our inner experiences of thought, feeling, emotion and belief have no effect on the world beyond our bodies based on those two false assumptions that have been accepted for 300 years by scientists, I can see why there would be a disconnect when they're looking at magnetic fields of the Earth spiking precisely the moment the human emotion of the planet is focused on a disaster. This led to a series of studies, and the bottom line to the studies is this. What they found is that it is human emotion, specifically the magnetic fields produced by the human heart during certain kinds of emotion that now our document is extending far beyond our bodies into the physical world and now to such a degree that our satellites hundreds of miles above the surface are able to pick these up. This has led to a number of studies now showing that when a certain number of people come together and they choose in a moment of time to create a precise emotion in their hearts that that emotion literally can intentionally influence the very fields that sustain the life on planet Earth. These fields are now implicated in everything from the immune response of humans uh, throughout the planet, climate, weather patterns, uh, uh, cycles of war in peace, our ability to solve problems, our cognitive abilities. Uh, all of these, as different as they sound from one another, are all linked to our relationship to the magnetic fields of the earth. So what makes this so beautiful is every human on the planet is linked to the field, but not every human on the planet has to be consciously aware of their relationship to benefit from what a relatively few number of people come to understand. And the bottom line is this, is that when we choose to feel feelings that create what is called coherence in our bodies, Coherence is the language, the quality of the language between our heart and our brain. Certain kinds of heart-based experiences 
such as appreciation, gratitude, forgiveness, care, compassion. Those are the ancient understandings that have always been taught in the, the, the truest traditions of our past and now our own science is finding that those same traditions are now documenting this very real effect in our hearts. When we can feel those feelings in our bodies, they are mirrored in the field and everyone benefits from the experience of relatively few. Well, The question comes up often as to whether or not we can actually measure human emotion. What scientists are now documenting uh, is the effect of emotions upon the heart field. The human heart is now documented as the strongest generator of both electrical and magnetic fields in the body. Now, this is important because we've always been taught that the brain is where the action is. The brain has an electrical field, it does have a magnetic field, but they're relatively weak compared to the heart. The heart is about 100 times stronger electrically and up to 5,000 times stronger, 5,000 times stronger magnetically than the brain. And the reason this is important is because the physical world as we know it is made of those two fields of energy, electrical and magnetic fields of energy, electromagnetic fields. Our own physics books now tell us if we can change either the magnetic field of an atom or the electrical field of the atom, by doing that we change, we literally change that atom, we change the stuff that our bodies in this world are made of. And it appears now that the human heart is designed to do both, to change both the electrical field and the magnetic field of our bodies and our world, and they do so in response to the emotions that we create uh, between our heart and our brain. Well, I've had many questions uh, from people asking me how these discoveries relate to what is now known as the law of attraction. At a very high level, in broad brushstrokes, they may give us insight into the relationships, but when we get deep, deep, deep into the findings as well as the ancient teachings, what we find is this, it's less about attraction and more about a mirroring. And here's what I mean by that. The world around us, our own science now is telling us there's a field of energy that underlies all physical reality. And it, it is known now by names that range from simply the field. Uh, Lynn McTaggart wrote a beautiful book entitled The Field about this, this quantum essence. Some people call it nature's mind. Some scientists call it the mind of God. Some call it the matrix. Some call it the divine matrix. In 1944, the father of quantum theory, Max Planck, identified this field and he called it the matrix. That's where this term came from. And what we're now beginning to understand is that when we create the feelings of what we choose to experience in our lives, everything from uh, conscious choices of the perfect relationship or abundance in our lives or the healing in our bodies or the healing in the bodies of our loved ones, that those feelings are creating the patterns of magnetic and electrical field in our hearts that are literally rearranging the stuff of this quantum soup, this quantum essence, allowing the pattern of what we have claimed in our hearts to become manifest in the world around us. So it's less about attracting uh, from a scientific perspective and more about consciously creating the template within us, knowing that the stuff of the universe will congeal around that template in the world around us to simply mirror reflect what we've claimed. In other words, a very simple way of looking at this, and we've all heard this before, is that we must become in our lives the very things that we choose to experience in our world. Now science is giving us a very good reason to understand why that is. How many individuals would it take to claim this feeling in our hearts to create the effect in our, in our world? And the ideas about that are changing. Back in the 1970s, 1980s, through uh, the Maharishi effect, the, the TM studies, uh, it was very well documented that there is an effect between human consciousness and the world around us. That effect is known. But what could never be documented was precisely what was happening inside the body of the individual to create that effect. And it was during that time that a formula was created. And the formula simply stated, if we can create this effect with a certain number of people, the square root of 1% of a given population, then we will have the effect.